Okay, and once we're done with the install, now let's cover React fundamentals. As a side note, if you ever want to reference the complete source code, just navigate to my GitHub profile and look for this repo. More specifically, search for fundamentals directory. Also in there, you'll find a readme file with all of the topics we're going to cover in the fundamentals section. And yes, I will reference this file quite a bit in the upcoming videos. As far as the readme, I tried such approach in my MERN course. And since students seem to really like it, I decided to implement it in my other courses as well. Basically, the goal of the readme file is to save your time on note taking and to allow you complete tasks independently if that's your preferred way of learning content. All right, and once we have created our first React app, now let's quickly discuss files and folders provided by Create React App. And first up, we've got node modules. And effectively, in there, you'll find all of our dependencies. Essentially, the dependencies our project is using. And if you're iffy on the whole dependencies concept, just wait a little bit. In a few minutes, we'll cover package JSON. And once we do that, it's going to be easier to see the big picture. After that, we've got public folder, which contains static assets, including index.html which basically is the thing that is served to the browser. In other words, index.html is responsible for whatever you see in the browser. And if you decide to inspect index.html file, you'll see that it's pretty typical HTML file. So if you crack it open, you'll see that it has typical tags. It has the head element. It also has the body one and in the head element, we can change the title, get the fonts, CSS, maybe even a favicon. And just to show you that I'm not making this up, I'm going to navigate there. I'll search for the title tags and let's write here React tutorial or whatever value you want to provide. And check it out. The moment I change it, I also can see that in the browser. Now, one thing that is very, very important is this div with ID of root. Believe it or not, our entire application effectively lives over here. And I know it sounds somewhat unbelievable, but effectively our workflow is going to be following. We'll set up whatever logic we want or need in the source one, in the source folder, and then it's going to get injected in this route. And essentially, as a result, we'll render our application in the browser. And don't worry, I will come back to this concept quite a few times because I fully understand that the first time you see that you're like, whoa, that's some really impressive stuff. Yep, I agree. After that, we've got source folder, which basically is the brain of our app. And therefore, in there, we'll do all of our work. Now, I'm not going to cover any of the files in source folder for now, since Create React App creates a bunch of boilerplate. And actually, I prefer, especially while we're covering fundamentals, setting everything up together from the scratch. But in short, in the source, we'll set up all our components, pages, utils functions, assets, CSS, and whatever else we need for our project. As we continue with the course, you'll see that there are really no restrictions on the folder structure inside source. So the way you manage your code really comes down to your preference. As long as there's index.js, which is going to be our JavaScript entry point. So remember the ID root in the index.html. Once we're done adding our functionality, like I said, it's going to get injected in there. And as a result, we will render our application in the browser. After source, we've got dot git ignore, which specifies which files will be ignored by the source control effectively Git. So if you navigate there, you'll see a list of files and folders 
that are going to be ignored once we push our project up to GitHub, for example. After that, we got package log, but let's just skip it for now. And first, let's discuss package JSON. And effectively, package JSON contains useful info about our project. Now, we will mostly be interested in two things in scripts, as well as the dependencies. Now, package JSON is not specific to React apps, pretty much every node project has one. So let's take a peek. Essentially, like I said, useful info about our project. And you'll also most likely hear this term manifest file. So in here, we can see the name, we can see the version. And like I said, we are mostly interested in two things, independencies, our project is using. So these are the main dependencies, as well as the scripts. So these are the commands we can run in our project. That's why when we run npm start, essentially, it sets up our application. And yes, we'll discuss the other commands a little bit later. For now, we're literally interested in this one, the npm start. Now, when it comes to commands, normally you go with npm run and then the command, but with start, we can simply go with npm and then start. Now, if you peeked at the node modules, you probably noticed that it's huge. It's literally massive. But in the package JSON, we actually have way less dependencies. So what's up with that? Well, you see, so these are the main dependencies our project is using. But we need to keep in mind that Every time we get a dependency, so some kind of library, some other devs were kind enough to set up, and essentially we're just utilizing the code in that library. Well, those libraries can have dependencies on their own, which is the case over here. So every time we'll install dependency, which of course we'll do during the course, there's going to be more dependencies because the dependency has its own dependencies. Hopefully I'm making myself clear. So again, these are the main dependencies. And then since they have dependencies on their own, the node modules is quite big. And that's actually one of the reasons why you will always see it in Git ignore. I mean, in most cases. So when we're pushing this up to a GitHub, normally node modules are not included because they're huge. And there's also no need. If you have package, JSON, the moment you'll run npm install, essentially, you'll right away install all dependencies. So not just the main libraries, but also the dependencies that they are using. And that's why we also need a package lock. Because essentially, it's a snapshot of our entire dependency tree. Now I can tell you right away that you really are not going to do any work in a package lock or node modules. So this is just a general info and pretty much you can forget about them. All of our work is going to happen in the source. And then yes, once in a while, we'll navigate to a package JSON, we'll discuss some package. And yes, we'll add few commands of our own, but that's later in the course. And lastly, we have a readme file, which essentially is a markdown file where you can share more info about the project. For example, build instructions and summary. And while we're still on a topic of readme, I just want to showcase how you can quickly get the readme that I provided. Now again, you don't have to do it. It's totally up to you. But just in case you're interested, navigate to that repo, look for fundamentals, then click on readme, then you want to go with the raw, essentially select everything, go back. Now, of course, I already have these values here select everything that's currently in a readme, copy and paste, and you are good to go. Now, one last thing that I quickly want to mention here and there, your results might differ a little bit as far as the browser, just because I'm using zoom level. So at the moment, I have 175. That's pretty typical for me. But here and there, you might see me going more or less. Since that way, I can showcase some stuff better. Again, not a big deal. It doesn't mean that the code is different. I'm just saying that visually here and there, our results might differ just because I use specific zoom level. That's about it. And up next, we're going to remove some boilerplate code.